Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. I'm here with the Audi RS6 Avant. I'm going to show you a no stage 6 build for live racing because this is one of the better cars out there for possible use in live. As you can see, I have no stage 6 installed. I'm actually using stage 4 for some of the stages. That is intentional. Uh, in some cases, some cars get higher EVO without as many of the stage 6s or stage 5s than when it has the stage 5, stage 6s. You can do a stage 5 across the board build as well. It really works the same way. Uh, but this is just my particular choice at this point. Now, from a tuning standpoint, this car does not require really specific tuning other than um, it's up to you how you want to do the nitrous. The shorter duration will give you a higher EVO and therefore a lower initial starting time. But it also runs out the nitrous quicker. 3.0405, you can basically tune it to whatever you feel comfortable with for max EVO. Um, I tend to tune it so that I'm kind of sitting not too tight on one end or the other of a lobby. Uh, so that's why I gave up a few points. But you can actually get more points pretty easily uh, and get this car into, say, 12.0 range. It doesn't ultimately make that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. Uh, the shift pattern will dictate what you ultimately end up with as far as how well the car runs. Now, tire 0100. Dyno says 12.116. This car will beat Dyno, but it all comes back to that shift pattern. And if you shift it properly, it'll do just fine. Is this thing a killer? because it beats Dino, or is it because it has very good basic lobbying advantage? I would say it has a little bit of both, making it one of the more dangerous cars to deal with in live. Now, I use Nitrous in 6, and I actually short shift slightly, rather than shifting a red line, to get the best run I can out of it. In this situation, the car basically runs uh, somewhere in the 11.8 to 11.9 range. A lot of it goes back to the shift pattern. A little bit off on the shifting. For example, uh, if you don't jump right to fourth gear, or if you don't, or use nitrous too early or too late, it completely changes the dyna dynamic of the car. For example, let's go ahead and do it a little differently where we shift slower. Okay, four, five. And then you hit nitrous in fifth before it ends. This changes the way the nitrous pushes the car and therefore changes the way the car runs time-wise. And it'll push it into the 11.9 range um, very easily. Now, you can also tweak the car a little bit differently. So here I'm running 11.9 rather than 11.8 simply because I use nitrous and shifting differently. It also is generally not going to want you to stay in first, second, and third at all. I mean, if the, the longer you stay in those gears, actually, the slower it runs. So you kind of want to jump out of the first gear immediately, second and third gear, probably a 2 to 3K, uh, fourth gear, fifth gear, and then nitrous in six is what I'm doing. If you have stage six nitrous, you'll have a longer duration of 4.0, then you don't need to do this. You can just run uh, nitrous in fifth gear and it'll accomplish the same thing. Now, that being said, uh, from a lobbying side, this car tend to lobby pretty well. Um, of course, any car can be pushed, just so you know. So if you run the car too hard, you will eventually move to lobbies where you're not going to be as competitive. Like any new live racer, when you first get into lobby, I wouldn't push it too hard. Um, you know, race people, but try to hold back a little bit, even if you lose. Mainly because you don't want to reset your car into a faster lobby right off the bat of a few races. So in this case, I'm going to take it easy with the NSX and see where we end up. Okay, so I'm going to run it here. Seventh gear and holding, holding. Okay. Yes, I lost that one because I slowed down. But let me see what he ran. That's really what I care about when I first come into a lobby. I want to see what the opponents are running. He's running 12.166. Now... NSXR, I mean not NSXR, LBNSX, uh, when used properly, will run a little bit under Dino as well. So I'm right in the proper lobby from 
a standpoint of running the car. Now, earlier, while I was still playing with the car, I did a bunch of 11-9 runs against an, a um, one of these guys. And because of that, I think the car already moved up a little bit in the lobby than what it was because it was racing 12-5 cars until I started racing the Griffiths, and then it moved uh, right away to a 12-2 range. So this is what I'm talking about. You race too hard, push the car too hard for a bit, you're going to lose that lobby advantage the car actually came with when you first started. Okay, so let me see if I can find someone else real quick, and then we'll do some quick runs. Uh, this is the Charger Hellcat. Doesn't look like the player is actually ready to race. Let me see if I can race anybody here. Hmm. Let's try. Oh, wick. Let's try Old Smuggler. Old Smuggler doesn't want to race me. Okay. Uh, somebody will race. Oh. Alaluca Red. Now this car is a dino beating car, but it's hard to set up nowadays for any lobby because the game pretty much adjusted right away so that it no longer has any advantage. Um, I'm not sure how well the car is going to run. That's why he's running a swap symbol. But let's test it out and see what happens. Okay. So it looks like I'm going to be running past him pretty easily here. Okay, controlled run. Let's see what the run was. I would say 12-2, 12-3, because it didn't feel that fast. 12-1-7-7, oh, 12-2 on his part. Let's see if he'll re-challenge me. All right, don't forget, my dyno is a 12.11 something. So I'm running a little bit slower than dyno right now, maintaining the win. Again, something like a Griffith or possibly the Ghost package in this lobby, it'll be a little more difficult. They tend to be able to uh, lobby well or run a slightly faster time. But at least uh, some of the opponents in here should be easily uh, beatable with this car. Now, let me see what else we got. Uh, let's try Wolfie. So these guys, um, if they're set up properly in the slower lobbies, have a nice advantage because they have such high uh, EVO points at the build level, almost 2,300 in some cases, and that makes them very competitive in live. Okay, so I'm going to push it here. And here I'm, I have to chase them down. As you can see, it's a little bit tougher. Okay, now I slow down because I didn't want to push my car too much. I just want to kind of push them to the limit and see what it runs. And they tend to run 11 nines in here. That's about right uh, for that car in this lobby. So now you know I can run 11 8, but then I'm running almost 3 tenths faster than my dyno. In that situation, is it really worth it to keep fighting with these guys for wins when it's not really going to help you in the long run? Um, I almost think that it will be better to use your uh, RS5 against other opponents instead uh, and at least have better chance of winning rather than pushing it against just that type of car where you have to run 11 nines or 11 eight something to win. It's, it's almost not worth it in that case. Okay, so... There are other cars in here. So this one is the Emola. <coughs> Here's another car that is low upgrade, high Evo. Uh, but the Emola also does not really have, have the ability to beat Dino. It'll simply have lobby advantage. So let's see how this one performs against my car. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and Nitrous. Okay, easy controlled win. That should be like a 12-1 something. Um, so the Emola is, again, competitive uh, for what it is. 
but it's not a killer car unless you have it set up a very specific way to get as much advantage as you can but even then this car also gets lobby advantage so it's not specifically a car that you're going to just get um, wins over everybody so it's a little tricky now interesting thing about 12 second uh, lobby is that a lot of cars can actually do quite well in this uh, 12 second range lobby so you're almost you have an advantage and yet you don't kind of situation right your car is definitely one of the stronger cars but it's not ultimately the strongest car and there are other cars that will always be able to down tune or trick tune or simply have higher evo advantage tune and still beat you okay so we're good again six I'm not going to red line with this car because I notice it goes faster when I don't go red line versus if I go red line it's actually a little bit slower so I'm kind of short shifting every single gear it gets me to eighth gear and into the position better where I can win without pushing my car under uh, its normal dyno range if I do this quite often for enough races uh, this car will stabilize in this lobby and do quite well now um, some people use them in even slower lobbies with even less upgrade and in those situations your car can be even more competitive um, you know in the lobby let's let's go ahead and try another Griffith uh, these guys again depend on their tune can run anywhere from low 11 nines 11 eights to 12 ones that's if he accepts my challenge which I don't think he will so I'm going to skip them let's go ahead and see if we can find somebody else I'm going to change, I'm going to see if I change lobby first of all, but I'm going to go ahead and jump in and out of lobby once, try to get a different lobby. So again, this is not leveraging stage sixes. By maximizing stage sixes, you can actually make this car even more um, well set for these lobbies where you're sacrificing certain um, upgrades that are just less helpful and really pushing in the strongest upgrades you can get a hold of uh, those sometimes will make the car even more competitive because of the leveraging of the proper parts uh, but that's really your call if you have the stage sixes certainly you can set it up and leverage it but if you don't have them stage five as you can see stage five and four will do just fine okay Let's see all right not getting anybody in here I'm not moving lobby so I'm pretty set in here but I'm not getting really enough people that are willing to accept the challenge here this is a tough car to drive very hard car to drive um, all right he's pretty confident he's got himself a nice setting so let's see what happens if he can drive it well enough to beat me then he deserves that money because that car is able to set for some higher evo but it is ridiculously hard to drive and i don't really appreciate driving it so here we go let's see how this plays out not looking good for him because i'm already coming up hard okay i think i gave him the money that time yep all right i feel bad taking it but it's only 30k i'm not really losing here so here's the thing his car really isn't able to really beat me up for the money so to speak so you know it's a small bet actually I don't even know if that counted as well it does yeah it's a small bet uh, but it's not hard to beat that car if it can only do 12-4 to 12-0 since my car can do 11-8 uh, so you know that's where the thing is here um, again this is a very hard car to drive he may be able to hit 12-0s or 12-2 who knows what the tune is uh, but I don't like that car for that reason because it's not easy to actually get a good drive out of it. Okay, so fifth, six, seven, eight. I will take this win because um, I can. And I did give him a win already. So I'll take this one. Again, let me see what he ran. I think he, he was pretty consistent in where he is. Yeah, 12-4. Okay, he might have been bumped. Who knows? But uh, reality is that car against this car not uh, the best choice to bet money on 
In fact, it's not a great choice to bet money against the Griffith or the RS6 Avant anyway. Uh, both are pretty dominating in their respective lobbies, and when they intermix in these lobbies, it really becomes a matter of do you have the right tune and the right shift pattern uh, to eke out a win against the other guy. Now, when you come out of these lobbies, there's a little bit of a like a freeze almost. The, the game freezes for a little bit before it kicks back in. It's kind of annoying. Um, so seeing some bots here, let me see. If I run really slow on this one, I may be able to jump out and back in and switch lobby, so I may do that. Let's go ahead and take a slow run. Okay. With this card, as an opponent, because it's a bot, I know that it runs really slow. So I don't even need to use nitrous, and I can easily... Ah, no, I lost. Whoops. All right, I was going to say I could easily beat him, but I actually went too slow. But that's all right. Yeah, but it's a really slow run. I just screwed that up. Okay. All right. All right. Nobody saw that. It's a bot. He can't go to Facebook and t tell everybody about how he beat me with a 13. I beat him with a 13 one. <laughs> all right, here we go. Um, good car beats Dino. Problem is, of course, it doesn't have the competitive edge when it comes to lobbying compared to the cars that are in the lobby here now. Doesn't mean it's a bad car. In attack package, uh, set up properly. Beats Dino by about two tenths easily with ship pattern. So good car. Just let's see how good it is in this particular lobby against me. Okay. I suspect it's not going to be as strong um, as some others that can actually do a better lobby matchmaking plus beat Dino, in which case they would be very strong. Although I'm not thinking this guy's weak either. He's that's like a 12 0 run. That's pretty fast. So in attack, 12 uh, 12 1 5, 12 1, almost 12 0 run for me. So quick car. Um, but then again, my Dino is a 12 1. So you know, so it's not a that might be on a Dino of say 12 2 5, 2 8. Uh, or 12-3, doing about 12-1-5. Versus mine's a 12-1 dyno, running a little bit slower to win in this case, but can run as fast as 11-8. So that, that is what I call lobby advantage, meaning your car simply lobbies into um, the same group of opponents, but you just have an advantage against them because your car is so much uh, higher in EVO points. Uh, not always true with uh, some cars in here, for example that one but I don't know he's not racing me okay I think that's enough live racing with this car for now let's go ahead and conclude what we got here all right okay so overall this is again to in my opinion a very good live racer um, you can tweak it further with some other upgrades to make it even more vicious but I don't think you need to. If you have, obviously, if stage 6 nitrous, you want to leverage that and body and some other parts, um, you can get this car to beat Dino by even more and control the lobby even better. All right? Um, all right, let's see. Okay. So that is the RS6 Avant. I hope you liked the video. Let me know what you think. Any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. If you like the channel, subscribe so you can get notifications. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.